CISPA is a new version of trying to protect uh, us against very, very dangerous hackers. Okay, we're told by the government that this is a constant, ongoing threat. Now, is it a reality? Yes, there are hackers, and yes, they do some damage. No question. Should you pass up the appropriate laws against it? Yes, you should. I, I'm not a guy who says, "Yeah, hack away at everything." No way. I, that's anarchy in my mind. Okay, you disagree with that? Have at it, Hoss. But I believe in the rule of law, right? Now the question is, what kind of law are you going to pass? And the first time they came in with SOPA. Now they, they, that was more about copyright infringement, but they put in, of course, cybersecurity, always to scare everybody. And that was a Stop Online Piracy Act. And it allowed the government to shut down any, and by the way, the media companies in Hollywood, to shut down any website they didn't like. So the websites fought back and they, and they defeated it. Uh, with the help of the people online, but also because you had giant companies like Facebook and Google on your side. Now, the genius of CISPA is that it has flipped things around so it gets Facebook and Google on their side, on the government side. Uh, it's, by the way, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. Now, I want to tell you what's in it because this is what's the devastating part. Because if you had just done it, okay, you know what, we're going to have Facebook and Google, et cetera, cooperate with us on clearly illegal activity that's hacking and we got a court order to make sure we can stop it, great, nothing wrong with that, right? But it's not what the law does. What the law does is, first of all, it allows government and private companies to share information. Okay, so that's, for example, Facebook telling the government, "Hey, you know what? Here's all the info I have on, you know, Jesus Godoy, on Anna Kasparian. Here are their friends. Here's, you know, if you put any kind of business information online on a different site, it might not be Facebook, etc. Here's all their private information." P part two of the problem: you don't need a warrant or a subpoena. Apparently, they just, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution does not exist anymore, so Congress is pushing for this law where you wouldn't need a court order, it'd just be somebody in the government saying, I don't like Anna Kasperi, and I don't like Jane Hugo, I don't like Asus Godoy, give me their information. And in this law, Facebook and Google and whoever else would be like, yeah, here you go, have it. Okay? Who needs court orders? So uh, old school. <laughs> in the United States Constitution, so old school, right? Uh, point number four, the military would also have access to this private information that you've put online. Fantastic. And uh, point number four, companies that participate would be immune from criminal or civil liability, no matter how egregious it was. So first, the whole program is egregious. But even if they had a violation of the program and Facebook said, hey, you know what, I don't like this guy. He's, he's my next door neighbor, an executive at, or even a worker at Facebook says, I don't like this guy, Bob, that lives next door to me. I want to ruin his life. So I took some of his private information that I found to be damaging or whatever, and I handed it over to the government and to the military, and they went to work on my homeboy. Okay? And you went, oh my God, I can't believe it. And you made, it's, it could be a false arrest, it could be a real arrest, whatever. And you decide, hey, you know what, I'm going to sue that guy. They said, no, you can't. They are now immune from any lawsuit. So they could do whatever they want with your private information, and there's not a damn thing you could do about it. Well, this is a merging of business and state. And look, there are many elements to fascism. And, it, and of course, the most disturbing one was they killed all those people in Italy, Germany, Spain, etc. right? We're not talking about that. But the one element of fascism is that the state and the corporations merge so much that, in fact, you get a few corporate heads that are running the state. And here, I can't even tell what's the bigger problem anymore because the big government and big business have merged so successfully. They're like, okay, great, let's just all, we get all the power and let's steamroll the little guys. 